All right, we'll get started with Mark Weiser and Mike Griffith. Hey, John, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, tell me just about the uh, the three weeks, three uh, three practices last week in terms of the offense trying to get better. What's been some of the, the key points you guys have worked on, um, you know, as you come off Alabama and get ready for Kentucky? I think coming off uh, the Alabama loss, there was lots of things we could work on from each position group. And, um, you know, as the tight ends, we wanted to focus on uh, being stronger in the run game and being more efficient in our routes. And uh, we took those three days to work on that. Um, and we did. We worked on that and we got better. Hey, John. Uh, how much more uh, diverse uh, variety is there for the tight end in, in this year's offense than in years past at Georgia? I say it's hard to compare. I just think whenever we're called upon to go make a play, whether that's in the run game or in the pass game, we're going to go do it to the best of our ability. Next, we'll go to Anthony Dasher, then Seth Emerson. I don't have a question. Seth? John, um, just an open-ended question. What, what do you think the, the identity of this offense is right now, do, or do you think you all have one yet? I think our identity is um, a hard-nosed offense that we're going to run the ball efficiently, and then we're going to take our shots. We're able to spread the ball around, um, and whatever Coach Munkin dials up, we're going to go do it, and we're going to do well with it. Uh, Chip Towers, then Jake Rowe. Yeah, John, just curious what you uh, what you did during this uh, off weekend and – you know, how much of an emphasis either as a member of the leadership committee or just personally did you guys put on, you know, staying safe uh, uh, and kind of keeping this uh, track record of you guys uh, in in intact in terms of uh, the fight against the virus? Uh, well, first, there's a huge emphasis on staying safe. And thanks to Mr. Ron and his team, um, they've educated us tremendously well. But at the same time, all these players – our team, we're so focused and locked in that, you know, there's not a lot of worry with us. Um, you know, we stick together and we have one goal in mind and we're going to take it game by game to accomplish that. What'd you do? Did you, did you head home or uh, uh, what'd you do over the weekend? I was my mom's birthday. So I went and celebrated my mom's birthday with her. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, John, uh, kind of piggybacking off what Chips uh, asked, uh, you know, leadership group, is is there a situation, especially when it comes to the virus, where you guys meet with the team, no coaches, no anything, and, and you just kind of have an open dialogue about off-field behavior, off-field, you know, risk-taking and things like that? Or is just, is it all done as with the coaches involved and, and coach-led? How does that go? How does that conversation get had? I think at the beginning of the season, there was a, a big worry as far as, you know, we need to have these conversations. We need to keep everyone, you know, together to, um, to be educated on what to do uh, after practice, on the weekends and whatnot. But as the season has gone on, we've understood, like I was saying, that, you know, our team's smart and we have one goal in mind and we're, we're not going to um, have any – people trying to, you know, get in our way. And if you, if you don't want to um, be a part of this train, then you can just leave. Dean Leggy, then Austin Roper. Uh, that's a, certainly a very matter of fact way to put it. How many guys um, get off the train, John? Uh, it was just a different way of putting it, but it just meant that, you know, if, you, if you're not bought in, if you don't want to stay safe and do what you're supposed to do, um, you know, then that's just not here for you. Hey, John, um, I know that, you know, you being a tight end, this probably isn't like solely your focus because, you know, you obviously have to worry about receptions and things of that nature. But um, currently the, the team or the running backs are averaging fewer than four yards per carry. Why do you think um, the, the team has always had such a, tough time finding success running the ball this season? I think if you, you could look at it like that where, you know, we're not averaging the same 
clip as we usually do, but there's also these ex explosive plays that we've um, done well with. So there's, there's negatives, but there's also positives. And we're going to um, keep the positives and then try and take these negatives and be better with them. Brandon Sudge and Blaine Gilmer. Hey, uh, John, so I don't know how much of a role that you play on special teams uh, units or anything, but I wanted to ask you about uh, Kamarda and uh, Pop Lesney and the job that, that they've uh, done here over the first half of the uh, season. Um, how much of a weapon, I suppose, have they uh, emerged as over these couple weeks? Pot and uh, Jake have done a tremendous job, and I wish they got more credit for what they've done. Um, Jack's nailing these field goals, and um, and Jake is flipping the field almost every time he's asked to. So, it you know, we feel great having them. They're always going to put uh, the defense in a great position as far as pinning them. And then, you know, we, we can drive, and, you know, tight ends, we want we, – not tight ends, we want to score touchdowns every, every drive, but – um, realistically, that's not going to happen. So we're lucky to have a weapon in pod. And then in terms of uh, Camarda, like he seems like an interesting guy who just kind of has all this confidence inside. And he's like, he doesn't seem like he's hesitant to show that at all. I mean, like how, like how unique of a guy, like is he around the team? Do you have kind of a story about like how he shows that confidence and that swagger? Uh, I'd say on field, he, he's got the swagger and confidence, but off the field, he's humble, um, and he just wants to get better just like the rest of us. Hey, John, uh, just wanted to ask you, man, I know Michael Bennett wasn't directly your uh, probably position coach at, um, at Marist, but how big of an influence did he have on you just learning from him in your time around him? So he actually um, was like the wide receivers and tight ends position coach, so he – I was lucky enough to be coached by him. And then Coach Etheridge, who also played um, tight end here. And he helped me so much in my route running um, as far as like what I continue to improve on getting in and out of breaks and being more efficient at the top of my routes. We'll go to Connor Riley, Connor Riley for the final question. Hey, John, uh, how competitive is it for guys to get on to special teams? And as you know, players like yourself, they start playing more on either offense or defense. Does maybe the desire or the want to to play on special teams, does that wane a little bit, if at all? Um, for me, the desire never never wanes. Uh, I want to, you know, if I could play every snap, I could on special teams on offense. But that's not realistic. I, I want to do what I'm called upon. And, um, you know, Coach Smart really believes in special teams. And I think the people that are working their butt off on special teams – um, just show the kind of character that uh, we have as a team. You know, they're hardworking and they're precise in what they do. And, you know, we need players like that. Thanks, John. Have a great rest of your Monday. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.